I am not a lawyer. Nothing said in this video or any of my videos can be constituted as legal advice. If you do need legal advice, you should probably get off YouTube and call a lawyer. Seriously, don't go to Reddit either. Call a lawyer. Amanda, are you laying in bed to make a video? Well, yes, because I am trying to read what I wrote on the screen because I have a lot to say. I don't want to lose my train of thought. And I cite a lot of cases in this. Hi, guys. This is a topic I want to discuss for a while because it seems to be one of the Internet's favorite parody. I have a specific example that I'm going to refer to in this video because... It's the one that really inspired me, and it raises another point that'll be fun to ponder. So when it comes to parody, there's one case everyone knows. They cite it even if it doesn't make sense. Oh, I put text on top of a Colbert Report episode. This is parody. Anyway, it's Campbell v. Acuff-Rose. And because of that case, everyone knows that parody is fair use, except for when it isn't. There is another important case to consider in the world of parody, which is Dr. Seuss v. Penguin. You see, there was once a book called The Cat Not in the Hat, which parodied the style of Dr. Seuss books while talking about the O.J. Simpson case. Penguin lost that case. A style parody is not a commentary on the original, and therefore is not transformative enough to be fair use. Because parody must be a commentary on the original, and can borrow much more heavily from the source for that purpose. It has made me wonder, can parody transcend medium? Can you parody a song with a video? Does that depend on the song itself? Okay, so Smosh helped to inspire my thought process with the Pokemon theme song Revenge Song, in which they state that their original Pokemon video, which was removed for copyright, was a parody. And while I hope I don't say anything that disrespects them, I do need to express my full opinion on the matter. Now, while taking an entire song can be seen as copyright infringement, I believe an accompanying music video can be a commentary on the original. I mean, on the lyrics. Um, a cuff rose does say that parodic value can come into question if a parody can't get to the heart of work. In Harper o v. Nation, which is a fair use case, not a parody case, says that context matters, but was Smosh right to say that the original video was a parody? I've given this a lot of thought, and I decided that it depends on whether the theme song is seen as an independent work or part of a larger work. Ultimately, none of this matters in this instance for a reason I'll get into, but we can still talk it out. If the theme song is an independent work, then I don't believe Smosh's original Pokemon video is transformative enough to be considered a fair use parody. They use the entire song, but only make a visual commentary on a small portion of the lyrics. However, they definitely parody the anime, which leads to what if the theme song was just a part of the TV show? There's another case I'm going to talk about, which is Hustler v. Moral Majority, which is actually part of a series of Larry Flint and Jerry Hallwell fair use cases from the 80s that are super entertaining to read together. Well, in this particular case, in this particular case, Jerry Hallwell had sent a parody ad of himself featured in Hustler magazine to supporters asking for money, and Hustler sued for copyright infringement. As I've previously discussed, fair use considers four factors. And when it came to amount and substantiality, it was decided that the parody ad was one page of an entire magazine. So one could argue that a theme song is a small part of a television program. And while it can be considered the heart of the work, that's okay with parody. In which case, Smosh would have been right. Their original song was a parody. However, and this is where it gets complicated, Pokemon is not an American show. It's Japanese. That's important for a very significant reason. Japan does not have fair use laws. YouTube can be beautiful when it comes to creating something new from something that already exists, but YouTube is not limited to one nation. What is or isn't fair use can be complicated by international copyright laws. 
So even if Smosh was right from an American standard, they weren't from a Japanese standard. YouTubers are not a particularly litigious group, so it's something we just have to continue watching to see how it all turns out. Thanks for watching me think this through. If there's another topic you want me to ponder, leave it in the comments below. I prefer things related to copyright and First Amendment rights, but if I have an opinion, I'll discuss it. I'll see you next time. Bye!